Guys, if you're watching this video, you probably know that Rosie and I have been doing an Eat Like a Parisian diet challenge. Mm -hmm. If you don't know this, you can check out our first video all about what the diet is, what we're going to be following, what are the principles, why are we doing it on Rosie's channel. And you can also find our one month check-in video there too. So go mm -hmm. check that out if you haven't seen all of that first. Yeah. And you want to know how much weight yeah. I lost. Yeah. <laughs> And this video is actually going to be about all the struggles. Mm. So we did complete the one month challenge and you'll find out in Rosie's video that it did go pretty well and we've got some really concrete results, mm. but we did struggle a bit. And so we're here to kind of talk to you about the struggles and if you're trying to do the diet as well, give you some motivation and some tips to help along with that. So below in the link, you can check out a tips one pager, um, download your goodie below and get really everything and all the details we can share with you. I also have a corresponding article on my blog on intentionallyfrenchified.com, so mm. you can definitely find the link below and go get even more juicy behind the scene details yeah. about this last so month. So the first thing that we were trying to work on was portion control. And mm. I have to say the most difficult part about this for me was when we were eating out at a restaurant mm. or when I was having aperos with friends. First, when I'm starving and I order at a restaurant and the bread basket comes first or the olives or the peanuts or whatever little snacks they yeah. put on the table, that becomes like my full on meal. I yeah. can't stop from reaching and stuffing myself to the point where I'm too, I'm hungry when my meal comes and then I eat more than I need to eat. Yeah. I yeah. don't know if... I struggled with this as well. Like portion control for me, um, I feel like I've, I've been matching whatever my partner eats. So I eat... <laughs> I eat the same more. amount as, a, <laughs> if not more than a six foot tall man, like yeah. he's very active and stuff. And so I found that really hard as yeah. like, like, but what we were, what I was doing is putting um, a small plate out yeah. and like just putting like the portion on that for dinner at least. Yeah. But what I found really difficult is this. Yeah. It's, it's, if I see it, I eat it. Yeah. So if the plate is full, it will all be gone. Yeah. If the plate's this big, it will all be gone. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have in front of me. I, it will be consumed. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I find like aperos hard. Yeah. I find tapa bars oh, when you're sharing food hard yeah. because it's just like big plates of things and yeah. it's hard to stop yourself. Yeah. So I think that was kind of a struggle for me and what I'm going to try doing going forward in the next two months is really make sure that if it's not my main meal, I'm just not eating it. Like yeah. don't even start because I can't just have one olive and mm. I can't just have one piece of bread. So I'm really going to try to tell myself, just wait till your meal comes and you yeah. won't need that. Snacking. Oh, what I this is the one that I thought was going to be the hardest of the diet for me. And mm. it actually ended up not being the hardest, but still room for improvement. Yep. <laughs> um, I find myself snacking at times that I don't, I'm not hungry. I'm just mm. snacking for something to do. I think mm. a lot of us kind of share that. So one of the things that I think is a really good tip for making it work is always having on hand fruit or a bag of nuts. And so every time, I went to lunch at work because work is just awful for people bringing you like cakes that yeah. are left over from a meeting, like snacks from like a, a, tri a trip abroad. I, I mean, just I work food. in training and yeah. there's always leftover goodies. Yeah. It's awful. So I would say that at work, I always grabbed an extra piece of fruit when I was going to have lunch so that I had that on hand or I would grab a glass of tea or a cup of tea when I really felt hungry mm. and it kind of was able to quench what I thought was hunger when it was just a bit of boredom mm. or just wanting to snack for yeah. me. My number one tip is to take your toothbrush to work yeah. <laughs> and also brush your teeth straight after having dinner because um, late night snacking used to get to me and it doesn't anymore because once you brush your teeth, you don't actually feel like it anymore yeah. or even chewing on gum helps. So cooking at home for me was the ultimate fail okay. of the first month at check-in. I think yeah. Rosie did a bit of a better job with this one, um, but I just found myself eating out so often. I had a lot of work trips going on. Mm. I really didn't buy groceries enough, so I'd get home and there wouldn't be things in the fridge. And mm. so it was just easier to order. Um, and I felt super really guilty about it. So that was a big struggle for me. And so going forward in the next couple of months, I bought myself this fancy meal planner. Right. So the idea is that I will be writing down all the meals that we're going to do during the week, listing the different groceries that I need and going mm -hmm. and buying them on Sunday so that I'm prepared for the week. I don't want to give myself an excuse for being able to order out. Yeah, that's what we do. Um, we, we do a big grocery shop for a week and I've always seen that with my friends who order out a lot they often like buy groceries for two to three days yeah. and of course midweek like they've had a long day at work and like oh we've got nothing in the fridge yeah so that helps us as well like a big giant grocery store shop once per week and it's done and you feel bad ordering out because you've got food that's going to expire in the fridge yeah. so you always get through it 
Surprisingly, I did really well with the drinking more water, which I was surprised about because not only do I drink a lot of Coke Zero at meals usually, I'm also a pretty big lover of beer and some kind of alcohol <laughs> on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> so I was surprised at how well I did. So I did a really good job of cutting out Coke Zero, so that was great. And I did a really good job of drinking a bit more wine instead of like other kind of like sugary cocktails, for example, on mm. the weekends. What I struggled with though was my water intake. I had no idea how little water I drink. I don't yeah, know no. if you're a big No, I, water. I was so bad with that. To the point that when I started drinking normally, like what a yeah. human should drink, I was going to the bathroom. I know. <laughs> I was running to the bathroom like every hour. I was just like, oh my gosh. And if I, were, I, I was kind of like, if this is the result of drinking, then I don't want it because yeah. it's just annoying, but yeah. it gets easier. No, it's true. I read this quote that was like, um, if you drink a full liter of water every day, you won't have time for mindless gossiping because you'll be peeing so often. <laughs> yeah. And it's like so true. Um, so what I did, because I didn't do a great job, is I have a bottle of water now, a glass water bottle that I can take with me. It's a liter. Mm. And so I fill it up before I leave for work and I take it with me to and from work. And I know that by the time I leave work, the water bottle should be empty. Yeah. So that's kind of how I'm going to try to go forward in the next two months to help out. What I did, because I'm, I'm super goal oriented, so I have to sort of like push myself and play these kinds of games. I put um, little sort of um, partitions or like little strikes on my water bottle going up and it's like 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. Oh, that's and, cool. And I, yeah. I have to have drunk it by that time. So that's quite cool. And again, um, just when, when I'm eating and that kind of thing, I try and drink as well because I think I was only drinking during meal times. Yeah, So same. honestly, it just wasn't enough you know, in, a, in a, any given day. One where I didn't struggle as much either was the stilettos versus sneakers. I did a lot of walking and what I did, the tip for making it work for me is I told myself that any time I was going somewhere that I could walk under 45 minutes, I was gonna do it. Wow. And so I just gave myself a time frame mm. and I didn't give myself a choice. And so that really worked a lot. I looked at my phone last Friday night and I realized walking to and from work with Rosie and then going to and from a dinner, I ended up walking 15 kilometers. And I know everybody doesn't have like this um, opportunity because you need to take a car because mm. you work far and you're going to have to try to, you know, fit it to what's possible for you. But living in Paris, um, it really is possible to do a lot of walking if you have the time. Yeah, that's true. I definitely didn't do so well on this one. Um, I've, to be honest, I've been really struggling with exercise in general since I broke my knee a few years ago. Um, I suffered huge muscle dystrophy. I was like... I was bedridden for three months and then I was on crutches for six months, so I I never got back into things. Yeah. So just walking to and from work several times per week was already big for me. Um, I need to stay, keep improving on mm. this because it's not enough. It's not enough, but for me, I'm like, okay, you've got to so get back into it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that was that's still a struggle for me. I, I think, think it's really important, even when you're struggling, to celebrate the small wins. So, for example, if you're not doing really well on the exercise part, but you mm. still manage to get a 15 minute walk in in the rain to go do something, I think you have to be proud of yourself for that. I think it's really easy to be too hard on yourself, um, and especially as you're, you know, it's normal with a diet to struggle. So that would mm. be like something that I think is super important celebrate the small wins because you will have some yeah and definitely and when you're setting your goal it's so easy to be like I want to lose 20 pounds or I want to lose 10 kilos or whatever it is but that's what does that actually mean? So what you should do when you're setting a goal is is always have a why and it should be an emotional why. It should be, I want to lose nine kilos because I want to feel confident, because I want to feel like my old self again or because it's more than just because bikini season is coming up. It's because I want to feel hot in my bikini on the yeah. beach, like because yeah. I want to. So when you are struggling and you're you're going off track and you're like what's the point why should I even come back on track just think about that think about like visualize how yeah. you'll feel when that actually happens and how ha how happy you'll have been to to get back on it basically. something yeah something else that I wanted to say is that I think it's really important especially with this kind of diet where it's more lifestyle shift um, habits long-term mindset is that the short-term results won't necessarily be dramatic so it can be hard you know, keeping at it because you're like, oh, I've, I've been doing it for two weeks and nothing's happening. Um, but if you've seen the results video, you'll see that after a month, things really do start happening. Yeah. It takes 21 days to form a new I habit. I didn't know that. Yeah, they, okay. they, they've, according to research, that's mm -hmm. like the, the tipping point. Okay. So if you can keep at something for 21 days in a row, for example, 
no snacking for 21 days in a row, then it should be a lot easier for you to do that for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. So. All right, guys, so you got some of the nitty gritty struggles that Rosie and I were going through over the first month. We have both had a lot of comments from people who have started doing the challenge, so we would love to hear from you what has been working, what hasn't, what are your struggles. Even if you're doing a different type of challenge, you can let us know how it's going. Don't hesitate to comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Yes. We're continuing the challenge for another two months, so mm. you can check back at the end of our three months for a little check-in video again on Rosie's channel. So don't forget that you have below um, a goodies with different tips if you are doing the challenge to help you succeed. You also have the menu plan that Rosie and I both did through our first month of this challenge to give you a little bit of motivation and inspiration. You can follow any of our adventures on Instagram. We've got a great highlight going on to show you what we're eating and what we're up to. Mm -hmm. And you can check us back here on the channel as well. I stuck some bloopers at the end of the video, so don't hesitate to check them out. This was a fun one to film. Enjoy! <laughs> It is my, on my channel, but I shouldn't cut you off. <laughs> Don't eat anything outside of the big. Yeah, the big. The big, you picked up my ass. <laughs> anything directly out of the big. <laughs> we look very crystal clear. Okay. Sheila, yeah, Sheila, can you start the barbecue? <laughs> bag, the bag, the bag, the bag. Oh no, there's a room in the yard. <laughs> If you're really dying for a snack and you're at home, stand up yeah. and do a, a, just a walk and I'm like, um, shh. Oh. That's a wrap. That's, that's a wrap. wrap. Until the check in video. Au revoir. Au revoir.